our next speaker is Dr. Tessea More, and she is an assistant researcher um, with the University of Hawaii's Department of Tropical Plant and Soil Sciences. Um, she is an anthurium and orchid breeder um, and a great collaborator. Um, very important work for the industry having the new varieties um, and so she'll give us an update on that today. Tessie is um, originally from the Philippines. She got her bachelor's degree at the University of Philippines at Los Banos and her master's and PhD at University of Hawaii Manoa. So please welcome Tessie today. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you very much to Hefna for giving us this opportunity to share our work uh, with you all. And yes, this is our fourth year and it keeps getting better and we get more and more information. So that's been very um, beneficial to all of us. Okay. So this morning I'm going to talk about our research updates from a couple of grants that we had received uh, primarily the HDOA New Germplasm Grant as well as the Hefna GIA. Um, the HDOA New Germplasm Grant was um, granted to us in 2017 and we were tasked with a rather large group of commodities to work with. So and we work with not only commodity organizations that deal with a wide range as potted plants, cut flowers, herbs, vegetables, and tropical fruits. In addition to that, we also had a component that this, um, looked into micropropagation or uh, as a means to distribute the new germplasm. So the objectives of this grant were primarily to do research, um, import replacement, evaluation of import, potential import replacement products, as well as distribution of new germplasm, with the ultimate goal of replacing high-risk flowers and produce brought into the state. I'm happy to let you know, too, that two of our um, co-PIs on this grant will be presenting later today. So as I mentioned, the first phase was to identify and evaluate new germplasm. Um, I'll mention the non, the edibles first, the non-flowers. So we work with bananas, cit citrus, sweet potato, and taro. And as you can see in, in green are the floriculture and nursery crops, where the green um, uh, crops, cut flower and foliage, native Hawaiian landscape, dendrobiums, and anthuriums. So today I'll focus on my section or the section that we work with that is on um, anthurium. Um, one of the bottlenecks in anthurium production is the for long time or the length of time to develop a new product. As you can see, it's on the average about 14 years. Add on a little bit more and you have an adult. <laughs> So um, the development process for uh, creating a new hybrid takes quite a while. So we are tasked to, with this grant that started in 2017, it ends in um, September 2020, but hopefully we'll get a no, uh, we're requesting for a no cost extension. Okay. So for this grant we were um, asked to produce at least one new variety for the first half of the grant. And that first variety that was named and released is the variety Kipuka. Um, Kipuka is rather a large flower with 9.2. These are the um, measurements. Mm -hmm. Is it working? Oh, here we go. Oh, it doesn't work on that screen. Thank you. I will just talk about it then. Thank you, Tracy. So it's a spade is about 9.2 inches. The spade is not excessively long, which is what um, is desired by the designers. Its yield is uh, six flowers per plant per year. And the vase life is 
pretty long. It's almost like two months. I don't know if that's really good or not, but um, it's 58.3 days without BA, 58.9 days without BA. So whether or not you use BA, you almost get two months of uh, face life. Um, Joanne um, over here um, is our face life evaluator. So, and her student I just met is also doing the evaluation for us. So the nice, there are some drawbacks to this variety. Um, for instance, it's susceptible to anthracnose in some locations. Uh, the space kinks, when I mean kinks, there's like a deformity on the tip in some locations with some of our cooperators. Uh, it loses obake in the summer, and I'm not sure if that's going to be of concern as we get warmer temperatures. Um, during the, um, as uh, time progresses. Um, so that deformed space tip is what I refer to as the kinking space. It appears to be tolerant to bacterial blight. Um, it flowers way above the leaf and it has good substance. And in September, Greenpoint Nurseries entered this uh, variety for the uh, cut flower competition and it received a red ribbon. So pretty good considering we just released it last year and there it has been, um, it received a red ribbon for the Outstanding Flowers Competition with the Society of American Florists. Okay. The second phase of um, our um, grant is looking at the expansion of a tissue culture facility at the University of Hawaii at Manoa and Komohana Research and Extension Center in Hilo. Um, this is part of the previous strategic plan where we want to, wanted to streamline the pipeline of new germplasm development from research to plant distribution um, to the growers because definitely we can have new varieties, but if we are not able to distribute the germplasm to the growers, then they won't be able to grow it. Um, so this morning, Joanne kindly showed me the, facet, um, the potential lab areas in Komohana. Uh, we haven't really um, discussed the mechanics as to how is this lab going to be run, but definitely there's a space that um, can house the facility. So that's the um, second phase. Um, now I'd like to switch gears and as um, Dong mentioned earlier about the Hefna GIA. We also received part of a GIA from Hefna. And this um, period covers um, July 2017 to September 2019, but we might get, we are getting an extension. I see Judy nodding, thank you. Um, and so the first objective of this GIA was to facilitate the release of at least two new varieties, I mean, to fa facilitate um, advanced testing of two um, potential varieties. The growers, cooperators, identified which varieties or which selections they wanted to test at a larger scale. And this is because in the past, we only gave 200 plantlets to each cooperator. To do a market test was very difficult with 200 plantlets because our grower said they can't even run shipping trials because there won't be enough flowers to even fill a box at times because the um, flowers mature at different periods. So if the um, number of plantlets can be expanded, then we could have a more efficient way to evaluate shipping. Secondly, when you scale up production from 200 to 1,000 plantlets, there are some um, problems that may come out. And this is not unique to our Hawaii cooperators. Uh, when we went to um, Holland, they also mentioned um, that they have a variety or a, a selection may look promising when you're at the small scale. But when scaled up, um, production issues come about. So this was one reason why we really wanted to scale up variety um, selections that look like they have a greater potential and we want to be sure that we're not prematurely releasing. Okay. 
So the first event selection that we looked at was UH-2071. Um, it had a unique color. It's reddish brown, not your bright red typical of new uh, Lailani, New Pahoa red, or not your dark brown like Kozohara. So this was a unique color. Uh, however, it can be anthracnosusceptible at times. It's vase life preliminary. Um, I'm, I'm waiting Joanne's BA trials. Uh, but when we did the preliminary vase life at Manoa, it uh, was at 25 days, so not bad. Uh, yield is not totally spectacular, but five flowers per plant per year is pretty good. When we ha our baseline is usually six flowers per plant per year. But since this the selection has a unique color, then it might merit um, release or usage. Okay, so um, on October, just about last year, we did our first delivery and we brought about 80 magenta boxes that translates to about 1,200 microplantlets. And in earlier this year, in April, we followed up with 129 boxes. So that gives you 2060, about 2,000 plantlets, about 3,200 plantlets already and um, distributed to our advanced cooperators. That's a lot of um, microplantlets to grow out. The nice thing about this variety was that at um, the um, Oahu wedding celebrations workshop in June, one of our cooperators, uh, Pacific Flora, brought 2071 and in their um, booth. And as uh, Lois Hiranaga, one of our guest designers, was creating her bouquet on stage, she wanted something to add a little bit more color, a little bit more oomph. So she looks to the trade show um, participants and she saw UH 2071 and she asked to use 2071 to incorporate in the um, bouquet she was using. So definitely this gives us a um, um, uh, indication that this particular color is of interest. The designers like it and they found use for it and they really want it released. As one of the design, as the designers mentioned, when can you push it out? So they do want this variety because of the unique color and how well it works with the tropical nouveau concept of um, using tropicals with the temperates. The second advanced selection that we worked with is UH2555. Um, it's a unique color, not quite purple. It's more like raspberry lifesavers. So it's a pink, purple, magenta. We're not quite sure exactly what to call this color. Um, it's um, very glossy and it's a vigorous grower. Yield is about 6.5 flowers per plant per year. So in October last year, we brought over 40 boxes or about 640 plantlets. And in April of 2019, we uh, sent over 31 boxes. So to date, there's 12, uh, about 1,200 plantlets that went out. Okay. The second objective for the Hefna GIA was to propagate three cultivars. Um, and release it. So the plan of work was to name and release to Hefna, distribute tissue culture plantlets to cooperators for immediate small scale field planting. What happened in the past was that we distributed mother flasks for multiplication by a contracted laboratory. Then there was a time lag between distribution of plantlets and when the growers can plant it out because the labs have to ramp it up. With this new model, we have mature plants in advanced testing. Then we also deliver plantlets that are ready to be planted out, deflask, and then the third phase is to, if the grower so desires to scale up, 
the plants with the contracted lab. So we then have mature plants, plants that will be ready to be uh, planted out within a shorter period of time and then the build up. So we have a slow build up therefore. So what happened was that um, the first variety was um, Kapoho Velo named um, UH 1991. It's a large pink obake, uh, relatively good vase life. It doesn't matter whether or not you use um, BA, 34, 35 days. That's about a month. So that's fairly long. Um, and um, as, a uh, as it propagates in tissue culture, it was rather fast. So we like this one because it's a fast propagator. It appears to be tolerant to bacteria blight, although with the heat, it tends to lose the obake coloration. Um, Microplants were distributed to um, cooperators so they can plant it out and grow in July, to July of this year. And um, in September, this was entered by Greenpoint Nur Nurseries at the Society of American Florists um, Cut Flower Competition, and it received a blue ribbon. The second variety is uh, Honey Honey. Um, it's more of a potted plant variety or a dual purpose variety, slightly smaller than Capojo Velo. Uh, it lasts also long, 28.3 days or 31, so still long lasting. It's a vigorous grower, occasionally gets anthracnose, and it seems tolerant to bacteria blight. Joanne was saying that it may be sensitive toward minor nutrients and you'll get yellow spotting on the leaves. Um, but because it's pretty tolerant to bacteria blight, one of the recommendations made by Joanne is make more hybrids with this. <laughs> So that's um, one of the future goals is to incorporate this because it, this variety seems to be strong against bacterial blight. Okay. Again, microplantlets were distributed for planting out in April and July. Now, um, because we had so many of this particular variety, in April of this year, Hefna had um, another initiative as part of this GIA, which was um, P3 Partnership. P3 stands for Plantlet Propagation Partnership, where high school teachers in, from different islands were encouraged to learn um, floric, what is floriculture and how can you incorporate in floriculture in your in their um, science and technology curriculum so we had a rather small group but we were told by Hawaii Department of Education that though we had a small group these were the cream of the crop teachers who will be ready to learn how to learn about floriculture and learn about um, in um, planting out and through microplants as part of um, their um, teaching curriculum. So um, John Tanoe, who's here, gave the presentation on planting out um, microplants. And there were, we had a module. And the variety we chose to um, have the teachers practice on was UH 2007. So in addition to the plant materials that were distributed to growers, there were about 32 boxes of UH 2007 or about 425 microplantlets that they were, um, the teachers played with. Um, although we had a smaller group, we let them take home the extra boxes so that they can show it to their students and get them excited and encouraged so that we can do a second phase, um, which will be sometime later this year, next. Um, and uh, take this way, um, the teaching workshop, to one school on each island. So we are still scaling up production of UH 2007 uh, so that the um, teachers and their students can practice deflasking. And the reason we chose 2007 was that this is practically indestructible. We didn't want the teachers or the students to feel um, challenged 
so much that they lose interest. So we're thinking if we pick a variety that's easy to grow, um, cast iron plant, so to speak, then they might want to do this. So hopefully we'll have um, the workshops on one school per island and then expand it with the next GIA to more schools. So hopefully we will, this is the way that Hefna is looking at growing the farmers and hopefully the average age of the farmer will be much younger than 60 something years. Okay. The third variety that we released was Maui Bride. Um, very long face life. It's a nice flower with an unique color. The designers like this because it ha it's not totally white. It's a creamish color, so it can go with whites, can go with neutral, neutral pale pink, purple, and as well as green. It occasionally notches, so that's one drawback of this variety. And um, the shape changes with maturity, so it may seem a little bit heart-shaped triangular in the beginning as they, when they're juvenile, but as they get older, we occasionally will have double smith or it will occasionally um, turn obaki. So this is kind of unique. This is what I mean by the double smith. Um, and there's the slight obaki coloration. Okay. We named it Maui Bride because one of our designers based in Maui who does a lot of destination we weddings really liked this variety. So we named it Maui Bride and um, it fits in very much as a blush in the blush color scheme and fits in the uh, Tropical Nouveau um, theme. Okay. The third objective in our Hefna GIA is to release at least one existing cultivar of anthurium and or orchid to expand the industry and increase production. The reboot, so to speak, what we selected was um, Dendrobium Jacqueline Thomas UH1002, which was called Improved Uni White Blush. The reason we selected this variety to uh, re-release was that when it was initially released in the in 1991, there was very little interest in blush because our orchid growers wanted white, solid white. Now, as we are working more with the designers, they want something that's not a clean color. In fact, muddy colors are pretty much encouraged because it can go with any of the different color palettes. Mm -hmm. So dry seed was sent to um, um, Ogo um, in September 2019 and hopefully orders for this variety will go out and then growers will be happy and the designers will be very happy that they have the blush orchid to work with. Okay. The fourth objective of our uh, GIA is, uh, it's like everything, improve vase life, resistant, resistance to pests, shipping tolerance, and shortening the time from pollination to release. So anything less than 14 years to develop a new variety. It's quite a tall order when you think of um, what needs to be done. So if our goal is to add new germplasm to the floriculture industry, then we definitely have to be timely in our delivery of the plant materials. If it takes a long time, I'd say, and I don't want to say forever, but sometimes it takes more than five years before we can build up enough material, then it would be discouraging to grow the new varieties. So the timely delivery and the need to increase production are definitely, definitely challenges into getting the new germplasm out. So as I mentioned earlier that our tissue culture lab has started um, in the new model is to produce uh, plantlets for immediate plantling as well as um, mother flasks. So this is a refresher. This is the 14 years, what takes long in the 14 years. So we reviewed this and we can't do much about hybridization and getting the um, flowers to 
flower faster unless John Suzuki fishes out a fast gene here. But definitely hybridization from pollination to transplant will take more or less two and a half years. So therefore, if the two and a half years out of the 14 is hard to manipulate, perhaps we can focus on the selection and evaluation. And so we focused, it takes about 36 months to do the tissue culture aspect. Can we shorten that and how can we shorten that? So that we can get our cultivars tested sooner if we can get the tissue culture shortened, um, period um, shortened. We can get the cultivars into, um, not cultivars, advanced selection into field tests sooner then we can get our new variety sooner. So it's kind of like a domino effect. Oops, I got too excited there. Um, so um, let me backtrack a little bit. Selection and tissue culture, those are the things that we were looking at. In the past, when we selected varieties, it was pretty much the breeder thought, oh, this looks good. And sometimes what we think as looks good is not what the designers want, who are ultimately the end users. And so our old model was breeders work with advanced test cooperators with the growers, and we're all happy, oh, it grows well, it's best tolerant, it it's flat, it packs well. Well, we had a very good educational experience, so thanks to the Hefna Wedding Celebrations Workshop, we had the uh, guest designers come to the greenhouse, not once, but twice, so we had in June and in September, they came over and they gave feedback, not only on our advanced selections, but even on our seedlings. So they went through, spent some time, and we looked at the seedlings and they identified, this is nice, this is a potential. And can you push it out? Because we need it, like, like we can be magicians and get it out right away. Because they want us to push it out so the growers can push it out and they can use it. That's the bottom line. So, um, oops, I'm sorry. So our growers, our, um, our designers went through our um, seedlings and also some of our old selections. And one of the ones that, um, this is Brenna Kwan from um, Canada. She's one of the designers that came um, to the Big Island. Um, Surprisingly, there was this brown tulip variety that they wanted, and they wanted it, can you get it like soon? <laughs> so um, as a result of that, we want it soon, we placed it in tissue culture as soon as we can get, <laughs> as we can. So we'll see, it's not contaminated yet, but um, hopefully because they wanted it soon and they wanted it, um, so they can use it and they said that particular color that's rather muddy works well with the roses so okay so that because of that input and this was a rather um older selection it's uh 1698 we're in the 2500s now so you can see how old the selection was we didn't think much of it then but like again what does the breeder know <laughs> The other selection that they really liked was the one in the middle. It's UH2300, very similar to UH2065, also known, which the designers now are calling Moi Moi. Thank you, Grayson, for giving it a name. And for whatever reason, the designers call it Moi Moi too. And I'm thinking, wait, it's 2265. Who knows? They know it with that name. We might end up releasing it under that name since they know it already. No need to re-educate. The other um, variety that was, or the other characteristic that the designers were really interested in were the, uh, what they called antique. It's a nice way of saying it's the older flowers, okay? So the one on the bottom right, that red one, they were interested in that um, red um, selection, UH2053, because of its shape. Um, the designer said that the Hawaii developed varieties have a different shape. It's not as flat or two-dimensional as the Dutch varieties. So they want to have that depth or the lift. Um, so they were very interested in these two varieties that were, were that had like a twisting space. 
So we don't know if it's going to be a packing problem, but they said, let the growers worry about the packing. <laughs> we want this. <laughs> Too bad the growers weren't there when they were going, were, were growing, going through the, um, the seedlings because they go, we want this. And I'm thinking, oh, but it's a little bit, there's a lift. They go, never mind, we want this. So this is, um, the one on the top is UH 2198. Um, when it's young, its shape is like Princess Ico. So I used to be, when we were looking at this, I used to call it the Blue Ico, but there's a twist that's pretty desirable. UH 2053, when it gets really old, turns all green because we don't have a tulip or a lavender lady shape in green. They wanted it all green. So the question was, and this was like, this is the one that's mature. It's like two flowers before, two flowering cycles before. So their question was, can the growers keep their plants and have some of the antiques and what kind of markup can they charge for that? Because it's not one that is they'd harvest right away. They want to have some of that quote unquote antique, but it's really, um, it has turned green and actually it can live much, much longer because now it really behaves like a leaf. So that's one of, um, unless John, you can look at that switch. <laughs> um, ideas to mine. <laughs> um, but that's one, uh, one aspect they looked at. The one in the middle is um, something we have in advanced testing, but that's the antique form. This is UH2237. When it gets really mature or post-maturity, what, what growers would ordinarily um, cut for harvest, the entire spadix turns green so it be and the gloss is still maintained. So this is something that was of interest, but then again, um, and then if you keep it even longer, it starts to get a little bit brown, which is of interest again. So again, the muddy colors have been, like I say, we got educated as to what is desirable. And so if we get the whole spectrum of, um, from breeder to grower to designer, then we're all on the same page, then we deliver what the market wants. Okay. So again, this is some photos from the um, wedding celebration. This time it was in um, the Hilo one last month. This is one of our selections, UH2245. Um, designers really like it because it can go with a dark green. Oh, I'm pressing this now, it doesn't work. <laughs> the dark green and um, it also works with the purples. And so Brenna made a two-sided uh, bouquet using um, 2245. Okay, so going back to how do we shorten the uh, propagation um, tissue culture phase. So one, um, we received a supplemental grant, and this was an, from our college, and this was an offshoot from the HDOA grant where we wanted to do so many things, but we didn't have enough funding. So we looked at external or supplemental funding so that we can explore looking at using uh, other ways to tissue culture or to push the tissue culture process. So about 10 years ago, Harold Tanoe said, why don't you folks use bioreactors because Roxana was using a bioreactor and it looked very good. And so we thought, well, it's expensive. That was the our first, but then the opportunity to get funding um, came up and we had a student, a new student who was very interested in tissue culture come to our program. So we thought, okay, great. We have funding. We have a student who's interested. So we looked at using the bioreactor and combined, uh, compared it with our standard um, procedure. So our student worked on Nupahoa Red, AKA Lailani, because it's the number one red sold in the state. So if we can push that, um, it would be, it, there, definitely there would be an impact. So she used the bioreactor and at the time, we didn't have our own, so we were borrowing the bioreactor that was used for banana propagation by another lab. And so the um, conditions were also the ones for banana. So it was um, two minute immersion. So it's like, think of a, as a fountain that comes on every two hours. 
and the fountain will work for 20 minutes and that's how the tissues get wet. So, and the standard is we have a liquid culture that's totally immersed for the whole time. And um, over, uh, over time, she, our student um, Jacqueline Oi found out that the explants, which are nodal cuttings, um, in the bioreactor, there were more explants that produced shoots. So 87% of the explants formed shoots, whereas the standard, sometimes you have it, sometimes not. It's, it's a numbers game. Only 21 produced. So therefore, if you have more explants forming shoots per explant, the numbers were not that far off, about number of shoots per explant, about one. But because you have more explants forming shoots, in a magenta box where we have, uh, we usually put 16 explants, she was able to get 25 shoots versus 6.2 in about two months. So definitely, the, it was, um, we could see the speed. So this is what it looks like. Can you guess? The one on top is the one that came from the bioreactor after six weeks. And the one below is our um, control. So after doing the cuts, it's about a fourfold increase. So she, she, from one bioreactor, that's how much you can get number of boxes on the right. And from the standard, it's you put in 16 or you put in 10, that's what you get. You get 10. So we do two cuts because there's um, apical dominance. When you have the shoots, main shoot growing, the, shoot, the other smaller shoots are not developing. So for, she tried different varieties. You have UH2282, she tried it on Maui Bride, uh, Honey Honey, White Lady, because the designers wanted White Lady, like today, uh, Midori, and UH2198, the gray one. So um, she was able to get 23 plantlets. This is just a top cut, first top cut for 2282. Midori was very prolific. And then when you return the um, nodes with the top um, main shoot removed, she was able to get 114 plantlets from the um, per vessel. And of that, there was a, we had a very high percentage of rootable shoots. So therefore, this one we haven't, um, she's supposed to defend in spring. So there's pressure on her to um, continue the work. But um, definitely the bioreactor seemed very promising. So to summarize, we have done, I feel, um, we've done quite um, great strides for both the HDOA grant and the HEFNA GIA. And with that, I'd like to extend my thanks to HDOA HEFNA, Joanne, who mans uh, our program on this island, our cooperators, um, the designers who have now become part of our selection process, and our greenhouse crew. Thank you. Questions? Questions for Tessie? Yeah. Yes. Uh, where are you guys at, at releasing the UH306, the Olomana? Um, the UH306 is with another uh, researcher, Dr. Ken Lenhardt. So uh, our lab is not working with that one. Oh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. it, we're working with a number of individuals. I can answer okay. that actually. So, hi Russell, go on to you. Um, so I, I was actually just with Ken last night. We're talking with either, I know Gordon uh, is talking with Ken about potentially acting as the distributor and also Doga is interested in helping the other distributor. So there are stock plants here at Cheetos Labs. Um, there's about 670 plants that are out of the flasks and they're in plug trees. We have an order for 250 flasks in Baycon, at Baycon Green. And they're there. They're, um, they've been there for about a year. Uh, they got 10 flasks, and they were asked to, to grow them out to 250 flasks. They're able to grow more. So where we're at is we need somebody that's going to be uh, the organizer and distributor buying by about $8 a flask and try to help Ken get at least some of these research funds back and distribute them to. Uh, industry members. So, so
somebody's got to basically ask everybody how much they want, uh, front the money, and then uh, yeah, definitely share their definitely. I got one more question. Yes. Um, the use of catch uploads for reducing the amount of time for a product to be released, is that something that is already, because I know different different um, orchid growers have catch uploads plants and <coughs> they use their hybridization, but um, on the side of the mutations, but I just was wondering, would that help um, reduce the amount of time? With tetraploids, yeah. if they produce uniform um, progeny, then you can go seed propagation for cis tissue culture. So that will definitely be faster. But you have to test across. Just because it's a tetraploid, and we, even with us, not all the tetraploids behave um, as uh, where you have, you make a cross with it and you get uniform offspring. So that's the part that will, you have to test what tetraploids you have and see if it, if you cross with it and you get uniform um, or fairly uniform, I wouldn't say strictly uniform, you, um, you will have to decide what is um, good enough variation or good enough uniformity. You can look at it either way. Uh, but if you feel it's uniform enough, then you can go via seed propagation. Then you can, if it's dendrobium between three and a half, three, three and a half months, then you can have one fruit and that one fruit can produce over thousands, then definitely um, that will scale up production in a much faster way than going through the tissue culture process.